Hi, and welcome to this video. So in today's video, I thought it would be interesting to show you kind of the tools that I use when I'm stringing um, and kind of go through them, what I use them for and why, uh, and also what tools that I don't carry, I don't use and why. Uh, so I'm gonna just discuss my, uh, yeah, my toolkit. Um, but before we start, if you haven't already, please could you subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. It would be very much appreciated. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So I have my, uh, my tool bag here um, and the first thing I'm going to show you are my shears, my, uh, yeah, my string cutters. Um, so these are obviously super useful for cutting all the strings out. Um, I don't recommend you using your fine clippers for cutting strings out of the rackets because they're going to get blunt very quickly. Uh, so it is worth investing in a decent pair of kind of shears. You can use garden shears, um, a good quality ones. Uh, these are Babalat. Babalat string cutters. Um, I'm going to put all the um, all the links to uh, to get in the different tools in the description below. So if you see anything in this video uh, that you like, I'm going to put the description below, and you can find them uh, and then get them yourself. Uh, so yeah, so these are super important. These make cutting strings out much easier, much faster than having to clip each string. And like I said, if you do that, you're going to make your uh, your small fine clippers blunt very quickly. Uh, they do also do big electric ones, but again, they're heavy and cumbersome. So I, uh, you're going to see, I like to keep my uh, tool set super simple. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm going to tell you why, basically. So next we have my uh, fine clippers. Um, so these are from Rab, which for me are the best clippers, the best kind of fine string clippers. Uh, they're always super sharp. They're quite small uh, and they're light and springy. So I've always used these. I probably go through maybe depending how much I'm stringing, maybe two or three of these a year. Um, so they do last quite a while. So that's quite a few hundred rackets per kind of per snip, I guess. Um, so these are, yeah, these are worth investing in. Um, so again, like I said, the uh, description uh, will have the link to these if you're interested then. Uh, so yeah, so these are definitely worth investing in. Some good clippers are, uh, are essential. Next are my pliers. As you can see, I like to use the uh, curved head pliers. Um, just because it makes kind of feeding string through a tight grommet or kind of pulling uh, string out of a tight space a little bit easier. Um, I only carry one pair of pliers because I think more than one isn't really necessary. Uh, some people like to have curved ones, straight ones, fine ones. So I, I just like to use these uh, curved ones. Again, these are Bablat ones. I got a lot of these tools in a set ages ago, but they've lasted me such a long time. Uh, and I have to say they're really good quality. Uh, so yeah, so these are the pliers that I use. Um, yeah. Next up uh, is my awl. I use a fine point awl um, for making space in a grommet if you need to feed two strings through. Uh, again, a good quality one is super important because you don't want, sometimes you kind of have to wiggle it around and you don't want this snapping on you because uh, yeah, that's not ideal. Uh, again, the Babylon one, this is a, actually a super old one, but it's still going strong. Um, so yeah, so I like that. Uh, and then probably my least use tool that actually never really gets used but sits in my bag just because it does uh, is my uh, thick awl. Um, a lot of stringers like to use this kind of to either to move the string out um, or to, to straighten the strings at the end. However, I don't. I just, I've never used it. I never have needed to. Uh, it's just personal preference. Um, but yeah, I keep it in there just in case, I don't know, for something. So uh, that's probably the only tool that you're going to see that perhaps I could actually live without, but um, but it's in my it's in my tool set because it came with it, um, so it's kind of good to have. Uh, so yeah, I've got that. Then, uh, very importantly, I have my um, starting clamp. Uh, starting clamp is essential if you uh, string it a lot or if you want to string at a good level. You really need to invest in a decent starting clamp uh, because you need this for a variety of techniques that you can do. Um, also, for starting the crosses, I always use starting clamp to hold the string and then carry on weaving and tie off at the end. Uh, so. Well, good starting clamp is really worth it. They're between 60 to 120 euros, um, and it is worth investing in a good one because, uh, like I said, this has lasted me ages, and it's still super strong um, and does the job great. Uh, with my starting clamp, I always have a Parnell pad. Um, what the Parnell pad does um, is protect the frame against the starting clamp. So when you <clears throat> you have the frame here, <clears throat> and you have the frame here. Uh, and then you put the uh, starting clamp behind the Parnell pad and it just protects the, the clamp uh, against the frame. So you don't want to scratch your frame uh, when you pull it against the starting clamp. So this is Parnell pad here. Matchy, uh, I really like them. They look cool, they're easy to use. Uh, so the description to them are, is below at parnellknot.com. You can get one. Um, and I think they are two for 20 euros, uh, which is quite good. 
Um, however, if you're not able to get one, I will be doing a video on how you can kind of make a temporary makeshift one. And then um, there will be a video coming out, uh, just a short clip on how you can make your own one. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, and that's it. That's all I carry. Um, so yeah, so I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tools. That's it. Um, there are other tools out there that you can have. For example, like I said, you could have straight pliers, you can have thin pliers, bent pliers, so you can have three sets of pliers if you want. However, I like to just use this one, like I said. Um, um, there is also a super fine awl, which um, can be used for badminton. It can also be used if a grommet is super, super tight. However, I found that I can actually get through anything with this one. Uh, again, so not super necessary. Then there's something called an offset block. Uh, which just offsets the string, so you clamp behind the offsets, um, so if you would use a starting clamp uh, against, the, um, against the frame, you have the offset block in between, and it sits, and basically it makes a space for the string, uh, so that the part of the string that has been clamped by the uh, starting clamp doesn't go in a loop, which in some circumstances can perhaps be necessary, however, I've never been in a situation where I've needed one, so personally I don't use one, um, but it's not neither right nor wrong to use one, however I've never needed to use one, um, so I don't carry one, uh, basically. And then lastly, there's a funny tool that um, it's kind of for pulling a knot, basically it kind of looks a bit like this, it has like a big kind of dome thing on it, a curved rubber bit, and you clamp the string in and you kind of pull the knot. Uh, however, I pull um, actually quite sort of uh, unorthodox. I actually pull all my knots with my pliers, um, which can be dangerous. If you pull too hard, you can snip them. However, I've just always done it and I kind of have a feeling for these pliers that I have never had any problems with them. However, in the beginning, I would probably recommend pulling your, um, your knots with your starting clamp because it's not going to ruin the string and snap the string. Um, yeah, so I think that's all the, all the tools that you really need to string at a good level. That's seven tools that probably all in all maybe will cost you 150 euros, um, but then you can have a really good set of tools like these have lasted me. I've had these maybe going on eight years, something like that, and I've, uh, I've never had any problem. The only thing that I switch out are my clippers just because they go blunt, um, and I think they're around 10, 15 euros, I think they are. Um, and like I said, I probably use two or three pairs a year, which isn't bad um, for the amount of rackets that we string. So yeah, so it is worth investing in a good set of tools if you're going to be stringing a lot um, because, you know, you don't want to be fighting with some clippers because they're blunt and then you're having to like kind of move the string about to get the cut properly and because then you can end up nicking the, uh, the actual string that you've strung. Uh, just things like that and like I said, like some proper shears just to cut the strings out makes, you know, it's, it makes things a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, with these seven tools, you're going to be able to string pretty much any technique, um, do any string job that you need, get you out of any problems that you might have as well. Um, so yeah, uh, let me know as well if there are any tools that you use um, that I haven't kind of spoken about. Um, and if you have any questions, drop them in the uh, uh, comments section below. And like I said, if you can subscribe to the channel, hit the red button and also give me a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, see you soon. Thanks very much.